Hey guys, this is Under Cover Dudes all the way from Down Under, and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 FPS games who are banned for cheating or hacking. Coming in at the number 10 spot, we have a famous YouTuber from the Combat Arms community by the name of XX Turner. Known for making montages, Turner was banned by GM for the use of a hacking program. The alleged proof that was used for this ban was that Turner locked onto his enemies with an aimbot, which was shown by a red mark. But in reality, the red mark was one of two things, either the red cross of the knife reticule or the red backpack of the enemy he was aiming at. This spawned the red backpack ban meme, all while Turner was still banned from combat arms. It took nine months before the footage was reviewed by another GM and the account was unbanned. Going over to Battlefield 1, the next story is about the number 2 ranked play in the world, called Mini Dora Cat, who's currently racked up 7,114 games at the time of writing. Now, as you can see by the footage, Cat is completely dominating the server, racking up a ton of kills. Now, Battlefield 1's anti-cheat software, Fairfight, not only detects hacking software, but also looks for warning triggers that a player might be playing a little bit too well. Well, one of those triggers is probably Cat's score, which was 202 kills to 8 deaths before he got temporarily banned by the game for obviously what the game thought was cheating, hacking software, or something along those lines. Now, there wasn't a message saying that he was banned, he was just simply kicked from the game. So he thought it was a glitch of some kind, but after trying to rejoin a ton of different servers, it was obvious that he wasn't allowed to play the game. Now, of course, this was a false positive. Mini Dora Cat is an absolutely fantastic player, but it took, you know, reaching out to the devs on Twitter, waiting, you know, a considerable amount of time before the actual, you know, false positive ban was actually overturned. Emilio is the famous Counter-Strike Global Offensive Pro that was vac banned live on air. During a Fragbite Master Season 3 game against Hellraiser, Emilio received a vac ban partway through the 12th round. Now, as you can see from the clip, Semel and Anders very much joked it off, thinking it was a glitch of some kind. And to be honest, I think that was the reaction of everybody at that point. However, the vac ban stayed and Emilio admitted to cheating and from there he was banned from all Valve events. Now, with that said, a few weeks ago, he teamed up with some big names from Pro Team Godsent for the Copenhagen Games LAN, which is more of a casual tournament, hence the mixed teams. Now, when this news started spreading around the CSGO subreddit, a lot of people were saying that this play shouldn't be playing competitive Counter-Strike. Even though it is in more of a casual setting, the fact that he was blatantly cheating, got VACT banned, you know, not too long ago, only a few years ago, a lot of people were saying that he shouldn't be allowed to go and play. And the fire was fueled even more by the fact that his team, called Dream Chasers, got second place at the land and received nearly 14,000 US dollars in prize money. The next player on the chopping block is a top 200 ranked Korean Overwatch streamer by the name of Kid X. Now with the case of Emilio before, no one actually saw him cheat. The anti-cheat just went and picked him up. However, Kid X's story is quite different. While streaming, it was blatantly obvious that Kid X was using an aimbot with a crispy, clean lock just before he was about to go and get a kill. Now, as you would go and expect, only a few minutes went in pass before the cheater got banned for good. And with this extremely clean cut case, it does make you think if you got to the top 200 legit or just by cheating like you guys are seeing on the screen right now. The next case features over 160 Pro Team Fortress 2 players in the United Gaming Clans League. Now, the cheating software they use is called Lamau Box, which claims to be protected against VAC and leaking, and supposedly allows players to aimbot, triggerbot, rig accuracy, and gain wall hacks, I otherwise known as ESP. Well, back in 2016, the program got caught out by Valve, some source code was leaked, and 160 Pro players got caught with it. There's even a Google Doc of all the banned players showing their in-game name and their league rank, many of them being Platinum, which is the highest tier possible. But with all of this said, how many people overall got a VAC ban from this back? But with all of this said, how many people overall got caught up in this VAC ban wave? Well, according to some sources, over 10,000 people. And if your account gets VAC banned, your inventory is gone for good. There are rumors one person lost over $80,000 by using this software, which is definitely not worth it in my opinion. 
In Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, a widespread amount of players had been temporarily banned for abusing a key glitch. Now, in Call of Duty, keys open supply drops, which allow players to get new items, skins, and kits. There was a glitch during an event that allowed players to open an infinite amount of these cases, which normally can only be opened with in-game currency or real-life money. Pro Call of Duty player Jordan Kaplan was one of these players that abused this glitch and thus got himself temporarily banned for 48 hours. There was a massive outcry from the community against the decision, but it stuck and could potentially put the pro players in hot water with Activision. The next four people got permanently banned in the biggest Counter-Strike Global Offensive match-fixing scandal of all time. This happened way back in 2014, where CSGO Esports was still taking its baby steps, so team players didn't get a salary and thus the only money they actually earned was prize winnings. The match was during Season 5 of Sevo, I by Power vs Netcode Guides. I by Power came into the match as heavy favourites. It was seemingly impossible that this team would go and lose the match. The reason being, this team was considered one of the best North American squads of all time, the hope of NA. This squad consisted of AZK, Skadoodle, Dazed, Steel and Swag. The match started out kind of well, but it went downhill fast, with still missing some extremely easy orb shots and really a ton of uncommon areas that a player of his caliber shouldn't be making. After the match, there was not much fuss. It was just discredited as a freak loss, despite there being initial information that it was a throw. Now, this was until CSGO journalist Richard Lewis published a story that blew up massively. It was showing that four-fifths of the I Buy Power team bet against themselves and put a considerable amount of money on the line. Now, this was done through the CSGO gambling site CSGO Lounge and was confirmed due to transaction IDs linking to certain Steam accounts that were owned by the players. Now, before I said that four-fifths of the team were then banned, however, there was one member that declined to put a bet on themselves, and that was Skadoodle, and he's still playing Cisco competitively to this day. The bans sanctioned by Valve were permanent, and there is a very, very low likelihood that Valve will loosen their grip. The saddest thing about the whole situation is just how talented these players are. Steel and Dazed are known as by far the best in-game leaders in North America, AZK having some great aim, while Swag being the clutchest play in the region. Overall, this put NA back significantly, and in the end it was only for about 500 or so dollars. But with all of this said, each of the band players have been able to go and move on, you know, to some extent. AZK has moved on to playing competitive Overwatch, who currently plays for Team Liquid, while Swag, Dazed and Steel are all successful streamers on Twitch TV. Dazed and Steel have also been invited to be analysts at some CSGO events, while Steel has also done some spectating for some events on the side. However, all of these are non-Valve events. Any events linked to Valve, be it a major or an IEM or whatever, these players are not allowed because obviously the companies don't want to get in hot water with Valve. However, at the CS Summit that is running at the time of writing, Swag is playing for Cloud9 as a sub and he is doing quite well. The overall community attitude is that these players have done their time and should be allowed back into the community, into the competitive community. But as I said before, Valve is standing quite firm. Alright boys, so I wanted to go and end this video by explaining the whole Frag Hero situation because basically two days ago a channel by the name of Frag Hero went and uploaded a video about basically the same topic, you know, 10 gamers that have been banned for cheating. I'm focusing more on hacking and cheating, they focus more on match fixing and whatnot, but the idea very much the same. But I had this video in the works for the past 20-25 days. This video was uploaded, ready to go, completely finished and I was going to schedule, you know, for Friday. But as you guys can hear, I pulled down the video, I'm adding this extra audio just to go and explain myself just in case anybody goes and gets the wrong idea. Now the original idea for this video was because I was watching a video from XX Turner, the guy in the number 10 spot, the combat arms guy. I was watching one of his videos and then I started binge watching his videos going back through, you know, your old, olden days, whatever, you know, watch his montages and then I remembered his banning. And I thought that would be a really good idea just to go and start with that idea and then maybe expand upon it. And I was like, okay, people that are, you know, been banned for this reason, this reason. Then I kind of brought it out, okay, FPS games and whatnot. And then in the end, this is the video. 
But with that said, I think that is a really cool origin story, but it took me a long time to build it up because I wanted to make it, you know, quite kind of factual, you know, not just something I've rushed together in five minutes and whatnot. I want to actually go and get some really, really good ideas and a good script behind it, some good footage and whatnot. And that's why it took so long. So it's kind of inconvenient that they upload their video and I know a lot of people will be hating the comment section below because if they don't watch the whole video, they don't read the description, they don't read the comment section, whatever, they just kind of mindlessly hate. And I thought, okay, I'm willing to suffer that because I think this video is quite good and I don't want to go and put a good video to the side just because somebody went and did it, you know, before me. That's happened multiple times and probably the videos that I thought I would go and drop in the end of it turn out to be my most successful or the videos that I'm most proud of. So in the end of it, I am quite proud with the video and that's why I'm going to go upload it and that's why I'm going to go, you know, keep up my channel, whatever. And that's why I added this extra audio just to go and explain myself. So hopefully you guys went and enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to go and give it a like rating. But other than that, it's Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under. Out.